So there's been a big disturbance in the space-time continuum recently. Got a little video about that. We're descending toward Hill Valley, California, at 4.29 p.m. on Wednesday, October 21st, 2015. 2015? Future. So apparently the future happened a week and a half ago, which is really weird for me because um, when Back to the Future was made in 1985, I was in high school, so 2015 was forever away. Um, just for fun, I thought we'd take a look at uh, some of the predictions Back to the Future 2 made about um, the future, which is now. What did they get right or wrong? So, first, uh, TVs. Um, it's kind of dim, but you can see that. That looks exactly like a TV from today. Uh, they got the, the shape, the aspect ratio right. It's flat screen. Um, they got the color right, black frame. Like, it even with the boxes kind of resembles like YouTube or Netflix and what channel to select. Uh, and this is especially amazing since in 1985, a brand new TV looked like this. <laughs> Quite a bit different. Um, next thing, uh, personal electronics. Uh, if you were to watch this clip, um, Marty Jr. is wearing these goggles and there's a little number on the outside of them that indicates the video channel that he's watching. And his sister, uh, you can't really read it here, but it says phone across the front of her goggles. And that looks exactly like the same device. So something you can watch video on and talk on the phone on. That's a smartphone. They just got where you put it wrong. It's in our pocket instead of on our face. Um, Next one, uh, flying video recorders. We got USA Today, some flying machine that captures video and photos. We've got those today, easily. Um, how about flying cars? Um, Howard Stark, Tony, uh, Iron Man's dad figured that out in the 40s, right? That's just another movie that's from Captain America. Um, interestingly, though, Alan Silvestri wrote the score to both Captain America and Back to the Future. Um, we do have some things today, a few prototypes that look like this. And it's called a flying car, but if you take any interest in it, it's really a drivable airplane. Um, it's got retractable wings, the wings come out, and then there's a propeller, and there's like a few of these in existence, but they're propeller driven, they, they just fold up the wings so you can drive it down the road. Um, so, yeah, I don't think they really got flying cars. Not the technology that they were imagining in the movie. And then, um, lastly, hoverboards. Uh, I've got a little video about hoverboards. Hey, 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 hey,
the public riding hoverboards. Um, it's really cool technology. It's, it's a machine that generates a magnetic field, uh, and then it, it projects an opposing magnetic field onto the thing you're flying over. But it only works if you're flying over like copper or aluminum, and not like say a sidewalk in Back to the Future. So um, some things that got right on, uh, some things not at all. Some things maybe in another 30 years we'll have them. Um, there's another weird time event that happened just today. Um, Y'all apparently navigated that correctly since you're here at the correct time this morning. Uh, we had the end of daylight savings time. So at precisely 2 a.m. this morning, we all traveled back in time to 1 a.m. to experience that hour over again. Nothing really changed in the passing of time. We just all set our clocks back. Um, so God, on the other hand, did actually mess with the physical passing of time twice. Or at least he messed with his laws of planetary motion twice. Uh, 2 Kings 20 and Isaiah 38 record the same event where God uh, made the shadow go backwards ten steps as a sign to, as a miraculous sign to King Hezekiah. So, um, you know, the sun progressed this far, then it backed up to back up the shadow. There's a lot of things God would have had to keep track of, like especially inertia when he did that, but all-powerful God could do that. Uh, also in Joshua 10, it records an event where God made the sun, and s the sun and moon stand still in the sky for an entire day, just so Joshua and the nation of Israel could defeat their enemy before sunset. Pretty amazing. Um, and that brings us to this morning's topic. Um, there are occasions in our everyday lives where time stands still. Uh, not in the sense of disrupting planetary motion or disrupting the space-time continuum, um, but in the sense of moments in our lives where the passage of time doesn't matter. Uh, the Bible teaches us about this. To give us perspective this morning, we're going to contrast two New Testament words for time. Uh, first is the Greek word chronos. Uh, that's the sequential passing of time as in chronological. Chronos, the sequential passing of time as in chronological. So both daylight savings time and time travel have to do with chronos time. Um, the second Greek word is kairos. Kairos is a moment, season, or opportunity when chronos seems to stand still or doesn't matter. So kairos is a moment, season, or opportunity when chronos seems to stand still or doesn't matter. So uh, for the rest of the message this morning, uh, when I talk about time, I'm going to refer to it as chronos or kairos, so you know which meaning of time that I'm talking about. Um, let me give you several examples of kairos. Uh, one example would be when I block off a big chunk of time just to spend time with God, so I have unrushed time with God. Uh, so I'm not concerned about the clock. I'm not concerned with moving on to the next thing on my schedule. I'm just spending time with God. And when I do that, um, when I take those opportunities, that's a God moment. Whether it happens for two minutes or two hours, that's a moment with God where the passing of time doesn't really matter. Um, so that's Kairos. Another example could be a special celebration or ceremony. Uh, at the end of the school year, we take all the the guys who went through the men's fraternity curriculum, and we do a special ceremony. It's, it's a very uh, meaningful ceremony, significant. Um, that's a Kairos occasion. Uh, Kairos can be a season, too. Uh, right now it's a season for apples. Uh, if you want fresh apples or fresh cider, it doesn't matter what day it is within that season, you can go to the store and get it, or go to the orchard and get it. Uh, how about a car accident? Who here has been in a car accident? Several people. A car accident only happens for an instant, but in your mind, it, it plays out in slow motion. That, that's kairos. So maybe it's a moment where you hear of a loved one rushed to a hospital, or the moment you remember that major project that's imminently due that you forgot all about, 
when those things happen, all that's important is getting through that obstacle. One more. Uh, how about moments of opportunity? Kairos is when you recognize an opportunity. And uh, regardless of what you do with it, you might uh, have ignored the opportunity, you might have made a bad choice, or you might have made the best choice with that opportunity, but that occasion of opportunity is a Kairos moment. And that's where I wanted to settle in this morning. Um, those moments of opportunity. Uh, in my Bible reading plan right now, I'm in the book of Mark, and each Mark, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, John all recorded the life of Jesus, and they each kind of had a little different perspective to it. And Mark was written by a man named John Mark, and he basically wrote his gospel account as an action movie. Uh, he was the cousin of Barnabas, and uh, Paul kind of got mad at Mark at one point because uh, Mark left Paul and Barnabas in the middle of this big mission trip, and apparently he was distracted by other things. Uh, like many of us today, um, his attention is here, and then here, and then here, and then over here. Uh, he writes the shortest account of the life of Jesus, and uh, it's always moving from one thing to the next. Uh, very chronos-driven. He uses the Greek word for immediately 41 times in this 16-chapter book. It's like two and a half times per chapter. He uses the word immediately. So it's action-packed. It's a fast-paced account of Jesus. Um, but Mark only uses the word kairos one time. That's Mark 1, verses 14 and 15. Mark 1, 14 and 15. And after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, The time, the kairos, is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. He said the time is fulfilled. The moment it has arrived. The opportunity is here. Uh, repent and believe in the gospel. He says in the middle of, he says this in the middle of chapter one. So he opens his account with this, and he closes it with the gospel again. Mark 16, verses 15 and 16. And Jesus said to them, "Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned." So Mark recognizes himself as a what's next kind of guy, uh, but he also recognized the significance of accepting the gospel. Now, the gospel is the good news of what Jesus did for us to, to pay a penalty for us, to um, forgive us and adopt us, even though we deserved death. Um, if there's any moment in our lives that clearly stands out as a Kairos moment, it's a moment of responding to accepting the gospel. Um, how do we know that we have responded to the opportunity? Uh, it's, the Bible makes it pretty simple. Uh, it tells us we've clearly crossed that line when we believe what Jesus did for us about his offer. Um, we repent from pursuing sin. We demonstrate a commitment to following Jesus by uh, proclaiming his lordship and by being baptized, being immersed as our own decision to follow him. And if you've clearly responded to God in those four ways, and you've clearly crossed that line uh, to being forgiven and starting a relationship with God, you are in, guaranteed. Uh, if you've not clearly responded to God in those four ways, uh, but want to be or think you should be, um, you know, when we sing the last of the songs, come up to me or any of the staff and say, you know, I get it. I, I understand. I, I want to be. I want to follow Jesus. Or maybe you, you want to say, "I thought I was in for years and years." And tell me, what's this big deal about baptism? And, and we can set up a, a time to go through that. Um, so, but don't let the Kairos moment pass. And I just wanted to take that Kairos to talk about um, the gospel because. We haven't really talked about it much on Sundays this semester, and it is the most important moment in our lives. Um, but how about for the rest of us, those who already responded um, completely to Jesus' offer as a Christian, what does it mean to pay attention to the kairos of life and not just the chronos? As a Christian, what does it mean to pay attention to the kairos 
of life and not just the chronos. And I think this is especially important if we see a little bit of John Mark in ourselves, uh, always looking for the action of what's next on our schedule. Uh, and if you're, you're college age or younger, um, I'm sorry, but our culture has tried to shape you uh, into a busy, distracted bundle of nerds. And sorry that that's happened. Uh, that's driven by Kronos. Um, but uh, God desires and expects Christians to grow and to bear fruit. Um, last week we talked about the parable of the four soils, uh, the parable of the sower. The sower. Um, it was a farming illustration. Jesus compared different types of soils with the way people respond to his word. Uh, we talked about the thorny soil next last week. Um, and uh, Jesus records, listen how Jesus records um, the explanation of the rocky soil. Luke 8.13. Luke 8.13 says, uh, The ones on the rock are those who, when they hear the word, receive it with joy. But these have no root because they believe for a while, a kairos, and in a time of testing, a kairos of testing, they fall away. Um, so these are the people who, who stepped across the line of salvation and then just sat there. Um, they, they're joyful to be in, but they don't put any effort into growing and deepening in their faith. So they believe for a season, and then in a season of testing, whether that's persecution or tragedy or dryness, they've got no root to draw from, and so they fade away. Uh, but if the person's concerned with their spiritual growth, uh, they would have seen that, that Kairos moment of testing as a Kairos opportunity for growth and cultivating and pulling another rock out of their soil. So the person on the rocky soil didn't recognize it as an opportunity because they didn't take any of the other opportunities or not many of the other opportunities leading up to that to uh, grow as a Christian. So, so they didn't recognize the moment when it came. So here's a big takeaway from this morning, and I hope we really latch on to it. Growth happens in the Kairos, not the Kronos. Growth happens in the Kairos, not the Kronos. Just because life happens to you doesn't mean you automatically learn from it and grow from it. Growth happens in the Kairos, not the Kronos. Um, who here has ever made the same mistake twice? What? You mean you, you did something bad and suffered through the consequences, consequences of it and then you went and did it again? That's crazy. Like when you do the same thing over and over and expect something different, it's crazy. But don't worry, I've had my hand up too. I'm in on that crowd. Um, and that's because we don't automatically learn or grow just because time passes and things happen. We don't automatically learn or grow just because time passes and things happen. So how do we make that growth happen? Let's say I want to be alert to those Kairos moments, uh, those seasons and opportunities, and take advantage of it. How do I do that? So uh, we're going to look at three short passages in the New Testament that talk about taking advantage of Kairos moments. First one's Galatians. If you follow along, they're, they're kind of sequential in the Bible. Uh, Galatians 6, verses 7 through 10. Galatians 6, verses 7 through 10. It says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, he will also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. The one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season, in due kairos, we will reap if we do not give up. So then as we have opportunity, again, as we have kairos, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are in the household of faith. So uh, verse, verse 9 says, we'll reap a harvest in due kairos, so those moments, uh, in, in due season. And, and, uh, but that's after sowing and cultivating and uh, not giving up. There's a season uh, for that. Uh, so it's talking about having a long-term attitude towards being aware of these moments and these opportunities. Uh, 
So we should look for the long-term rewards, not the immediate gratification. Verse 10 says, as we have opportunity, um, again, that's kairos, we should do good. And it says, especially do good to our church family or to other Christians. Um, that's basically saying whenever Kairos presents itself, take it. Take the opportunity uh, to do good, to learn, to grow. Um, the next one's Ephesians, next book over from Galatians. Uh, Ephesians 5, verses 15 through 17. Ephesians 5, 15 through 17. It says, look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise but as wise, making the best use of the time, the Kairos, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So I'm saying be intentional about your Christian walk. Be wise about it. The verb for making the most of or making the, the best use of, um, the Greek word for that is like seven syllables long, so I'm not going to even attempt to pronounce that. Uh, but it's basically saying uh, don't be a fool and let chronos carry you along. Uh, but use a little wisdom and redeem your kairos. That, that, that word is, means to redeem. Um, be wise and rescue your time from being wasted. For example, um, if you got a coupon for a free drink at Big B, um, last month was Heather's birthday month. She signed up for their birthday reward, so she would have gotten a coupon for, for a free drink at Big B. So if she saw it, yeah, awesome, and then didn't go get it that day, and it kind of slipped her mind. And then what if she, she decides, oh, yeah, I remember that, and go to Big B, place my order, and pull off the coupon, and, oh, that expired yesterday. So, you know, if, if we did something like that, means we didn't redeem our coupon within the kairos, within the opportunity. So, so don't let life happen that way. Uh, try to understand God's will. When a kairos moment happens, redeem it while you have the opportunity. Uh, and it says uh, we should do that because the days are evil. So spiritual warfare happens. There's a, a current of evil in our society that will carry us along if, if we're not wise about taking those moments in life to, to do good. Uh, the third passage is Colossians 4, it's a couple books over from Ephesians. Uh, Colossians 4, verse 2, and then 5 and 6. Colossians 4, verse 2, and then 5 and 6. It says, continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it and thank with thanksgiving. Verse 5. Uh, walk in wisdom toward outsiders, talking about non-Christians, uh, making the best use, again, the word redeem, of the time, your, your kairos. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to an answer uh, each person. So why should we be watchful in prayer? So we will recognize kairos opportunities when they happen. Uh, so again, we have this idea of always being on the lookout. Uh, being watchful, praying about it. And uh, we, sh we should use re wisdom to redeem it. Again, it's talking about that. Redeem the Kairos with uh, seekers, with, with people um, who aren't Christians yet, but potentially interested in. Uh, are my eyes open to those moments to share my faith? Are, are, am I living a good example for someone who's considering whether they want to follow Jesus? So here's a summary of uh, the main Kairos ideas from those three passages. Um, it's a long-term mindset about uh, seizing short-term opportunities. It involves watching and praying and wisdom. It concerns your actions and your speech. It can you apply it towards Christians and non-Christians. That about covers it, doesn't it? All of life. Um, here's the bottom line. If you are watchful, you will notice Kairos. When you notice Kairos, you will know what to do with it. If you are watchful, you will notice Kairos. When you notice Kairos, you will know what to do with it. Um, 
how do I know what to, what to do with it? You'll know. If you sense the opportunity to go talk to someone across the room, you know what to do with it. You go over there and you open your mouth. It doesn't mean it'll be perfect. It doesn't mean there's not opportunities to learn and make it better next time, but you know how to get started. Well, what if that conversation leads to them wanting to learn about the gospel? I, I don't know what to tell them. Well, do you know anyone you could learn that from? I mean, do you know where you could find a resource to, to share that? So you, we know how to get started. We, um, well, what if it's something about my future plans? Like, what if I think God wants me to do uh, ministry to the point or the, the summer I, the IT project over the summer? The answer is yes, but I don't know where to start. Well, again, do you, do you know somebody you could talk to about that? Yeah. Is there a website you could look up? Yeah. We know what to do. We, we make things a lot more complicated than they need to be. We, we know enough to get started. The hard part is recognizing the moment and deciding to make the best of it. Uh, I would say that's 90% of the battle. But once, we, uh, once we've gotten that far, um, prayer and a handful of wisdom will get us started. Um, without being watchful, we're not going to take notice of those everyday Kairos moments and opportunities. Um, we'll still see the major ones when something major happens in our life and the time kind of stands still. But without the desire to grow, um, the opportunity will pass and uh, we'll be sucked back into Kronos. So growth happens, again, in the Kairos, not in the Kronos. So... Um, it's kind of a lifelong subject, but that's hard for us to wrap our minds around, so I want to give you a challenge for one week. Um, your challenge, carefully watch and redeem Kairos for the next week and jot each one down. So uh, carefully watch for and redeem Kairos this week and jot each one down. It might be something big, it might be something small, but that's okay. Um, and when we write it down, we'll be able to remember it better. We'll be able to tell others about what God's doing. Um, just, just imagine how many growth opportunities might God bring to you over the next week. Um, even in the next couple days, we're going to try starting a thing. When we did the worship night a, a couple weeks ago on Tuesday, um, we're going to start providing more opportunities for people to share what God's doing just in their everyday lives. So... Um, there might be some Kairos moments that happen between now and Tuesday. Tuesday will be that, again, Kairos opportunity to tell others about it and share what, what God's teaching you. So let me close by revisiting one more Back to the Future photo. Um, as we try to apply this challenge this week, let me encourage us to tune in to the moment and tune into the season and not just keep our faces in our smartphones. Uh, live in the moment, not just for the moment. Live in the moment, not just for the moment, not just for the next moment. Uh, and this will help bring us back to the present. So let me pray. Uh, 